Welcome back to Brand New Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the XBB Omicron subvariants are now causing over 80% of COVID-19 infections in New England. The XBB variant, which accounted for only about 10% of COVID cases in the region, now makes up about 81.7% of all cases. This is far higher than the 47% of cases XBB accounts for across the entire United States. Dr. David Hamer of Boston Medical Center said in an interview, quote, If you go back and look at what Delta came in, or Omicron came in, they completely displaced all other sort of variants at that time. And this has not happened, end quote. Even with the spread of the XBB variant, the COVID-19 cases in Massachusetts have actually begun to decline. Flu season in Massachusetts is improving according to recent reports. According to the Department of Public Health's weekly flu report, last month the state reached very high levels of influenza. This didn't happen at all the year before, but as of last week, the report said flu severity in Massachusetts is at moderate levels. The latest numbers show only 1.2% of hospitalizations are associated with the flu. Around Christmas, that number was over 6%. The report states that seasonal flu activity continues to decline across the country. So far, 43% of Massachusetts residents have had their flu shot this season. Researchers are on the edge of rolling out a new vaccine to fight the RSV virus. Moderna released preliminary results of their vaccine for RSV that shows it's more than 80% effective at preventing serious disease in people older than 60. The company is preparing to submit the vaccine to the Food and Drug Administration for approval, which follows submissions from Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline late last year. Clinical trials are underway on a vaccine for babies and young children who are among the high-risk groups for developing complications and dying from RSV. These would be the first RSV vaccines approved, but researchers caution that the results in the RSV vaccine study are preliminary and are not yet peer-reviewed. The hope is to roll out vaccines this upcoming fall, se fall season. Although the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On January 19th, newly released metrics show that over 69,000 molecular tests were conducted and 6,804 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of January 17th, 349 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 109 are in the ICU. 125 new deaths were also reported in the last seven days. The town of Ranchi also continues to monitor COVID data from the state. The town hall hasn't reported any new positive cases in the last week. The town hall website currently shows a total of 11,539 positive cases since the start of the pandemic. There have been no new fatalities reported in nine months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 137. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Each year, the flu makes millions of people sick. Getting a flu shot is the best way to protect yourself. Within two weeks, the shot helps your body produce antibodies that fight flu germs. Protect yourself. Protect your family. Get your flu shot today. Welcome back. According to Braintree police and fire officials, a residential two-alarm fire shut down Hobart Street in East Braintree last Thursday. In a Braintree Fire Department Facebook post, members of the department were sent to knock down the fire and noted that Hobart Street was shut down in wake of the fire. The department's mutual aid partners from the Bru Brewster Ambulance Service and Boston Sparks Association were also helping at the scene. A number of volunteers in Braintree celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day by putting together 150 bagged lunches, which they then donated to Father Bill's and Mainspring. 
Father Bill's and Main Springs mission is to end and prevent homelessness in Southern Massachusetts with programs that provide emergency and permanent housing and help people obtain skills, jobs, housing, and services. Town Council President Meredith Berica hosted a morning of service on Monday where Berica mentioned how children decorated lunch bags, volunteers wrote thoughtful notes, and many others made sandwiches and assembled the bags which were delivered to Mainspring in Brockton. Braintree residents will have a chance to suggest changes within the town's government at two separate Charter Review Committee meetings scheduled for Saturday, March 4th. Peter Morin, the chairman of the Charter Review Committee, said there is a general satisfaction with the town's form of government, but there are always things that can be improved upon. Morin said the committee is seeking ideas from the public at the start of its review, rather than developing its recommendations and asking residents for their comments. The meetings are scheduled for 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Saturday, March 4th in the Cahill Auditorium of Braintree Town Hall. The Braintree Town Council unanimously approved a four-year extension of the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office lease for a portion of the former hospital property on Washington Street. The property at 2015 Washington Street includes five buildings which are used for the Sheriff's Office's Summer Youth Leadership Academy. The town will receive over $113,000 in annual rent for the property and the Sheriff's Office will be responsible for maintaining the buildings. Town Council President Meredith Berica said the rental payment is more than the town would collect in property taxes on the site if it sold to a private party. The lease runs through the end of 2026. A beloved and key historical figure from Braintree is a character in Netflix's first big movie of 2023. British actor Timothy Spall plays Colonel Sylvanus Thayer in a gothic mystery, The Pale Blue Eye. The movie was number one on Netflix's top 10 English language films list in, in 92 countries. Thayer was born in Braintree and his birthplace at 786 Washington Street is currently a tourist attraction. The Public Library and Thayer Academy are also both named after him. On screen, Spall plays Thayer as a no-nonsense man who wants quick answers. He worries about public impressions once news of the murder spreads and wishes to avoid scandal at all costs. Spall is best known for his work in the Harry Potter franchise as the villainous Peter Wormtail Pettigrew. Thayer died September 7, 1872 at his home in Braintree and is buried at the West Point Cemetery on the grounds of the U.S. Military Academy. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Did you know your teenager's brain is more likely to get addicted to nicotine than yours? The tobacco and vaping industries do. They target teens with their products and try to cover up the fact that there's nicotine in them. Talk with your kids about the real dangers of vaping. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. The unemployment rate in the U.S. has been the lowest it's been in 50 years, at 3.5%. But employers have started to slow down hiring from a red-hot pace earlier in the pandemic. According to the U.S. Labor Department, in December, 826,000 unemployed workers had been out of a job for about three and a half to six months, which is up from 526,000 in April of 2022. Companies started dialing back on hiring last year, in part reflecting heightened uncertainty in the face of Federal Reserve interest rate increases. Workers who lose their jobs have fewer job prospects than they did a year ago, according to job search sites. Economists say they expect employers to cut jobs starting in the second quarter through the end of the year. For 2023 as a whole, economists expect that payrolls will decline by 7,000 a month on average. Massachusetts State Senator Jamie Eldridge has resubmitted a water conservation law that would change water use restrictions for times of drought. The law would allow the Executive Office of Energy and Affairs to require regional water con conservation efforts to protect water resources. Currently, cities and towns in Massachusetts individually decide when to enact water restrictions, like banning non-essential use like washing cars and sprinkler use. This bill would also allow the State Drought Management Task Force to declare drought severity. 
Massachusetts experienced one of the most severe droughts in recent years over the summer months, and the drought was so bad that some parts of the Charles River had receded to bare mud. Currently, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, parts of northern Middlesex and Essex counties were still abnormally dry. The rest of the state has recovered from the peak drought and returned to normal levels. The bill is now pending in the legislature. Kentavious Coleman and Kenyante Galmore of Mississippi are accused of killing 19-year-old Rena Rodriguez of Lowell, whose body was found inside a room at the Hyatt Place Hotel in Braintree in 2017. Coleman and Galmore are just two of the three people charged with murdering Rodriguez and also face charges of unarmed robbery, kidnapping, conspiracy to commit murder, and conspiracy to commit unarmed robbery. Juana Rivera of Lawrence is also charged in the case and being held without bail. She was arraigned on charges of murder, human trafficking, unarmed robbery, kidnapping, conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy to commit unarmed robbery, and, der and deriving support from prostitution. Coleman and Galmore will go to trial Tuesday in Norfolk Superior Court. As for Rivera, no trial date has been set, and she is due back in court for a status review conference next month. Quincy's annual President's Day, Winterfest, is scheduled for Monday, February 20th. During the event, show includes the Blue Hills Trailside Museum, Birds of Prey, the Rainforest Reptile Show, the Mad Science Fire, an ice show, ice sculptures by Iceman Craig, and the Sasha the and the Sasha the Fire Gypsy Fire Show. You can also catch different performances such as puppet shows, laser shows, and Brendan Ryan from NBC's The Voice and No Static, a Steely Dan tribute band. The President's Day Winterfe Winterfest will take place from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Monday, February 20th at the Hancock Adams Common, located at 1305 Hancock Street. Some shows require free tickets to reserve a space. For more information, visit discoverquincy.com. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Branchy Today. This week in entertainment, we have a couple of movies and TV shows for you to check out. First in entertainment comes The Pale Blue Eye, telling the story of a veteran detective named Augustus Landor, who investigates a series of murders with a young cadet. That cadet will eventually go on to become the famous author Edgar Allan Poe. The film is written and directed by Scott Cooper, and the story was adapted from the 2003 novel by the same name. If you're interested in mystery and thriller films, be sure to check out The Pale Blue Eye only on Netflix. Next in entertainment comes Shrinking, starring Jason Segel as a grieving therapist who lost his wife and decides he wants to try a new approach to his loss. Jimmy starts to break the rules by telling his clients exactly what he thinks. Ignoring his training and ethics, he finds himself taking chances and making changes in people's lives, including his own. You can watch Shrinking on Apple TV Plus starting January 27th. And finally in entertainment comes the second season of Your Honor, starring Brian Cranston as Michael Desiato, a prominent and respected New Orleans judge whose life is flipped upside down when his son commits a hit and run that left a teenager dead. At first, Michael encourages his son to turn himself in, but quickly changes his mind when he discovers that the boy that his son killed is the son to the head of the most vicious crime family in the city. Now, Michael must take matters into his own hands to keep his family safe. Season 2 premiered on January 15th, and you can watch both seasons of Your Honor on Paramount Plus and on Showtime. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.